Hello guys, Winston here. A couple weeks ago, I had a pretty exciting package delivered. It was a Shapeoko 3 XL based on the updated 2016 platform architecture. Not only is it a bigger machine than the original Shapeoko 3, but it incorporates a bunch of mechanical improvements that the Carbide team have been working on. You can check out my video from last week for a more comprehensive overview of what's changed, but the bottom line is that the 2016 machines across the board are mechanically stronger, packed with some extra nice-to-have features, and easier to put together. The latter is why I'm making an updated assembly video since there are now way fewer steps. Here's what to expect when you receive your Shapeoko kit, and note that there may be slight differences in how your machine is packaged. Inside the mammoth cardboard cocoon that shows up at your front door, you'll find the components needed to assemble your CNC. You'll have boxes for each of the carriage plate assemblies, a single box containing fastening hardware and electronic bits, pieces of the base frame, rails, and at the very bottom, your MDF wasteboard. Stock and XL size wasteboards are a one-piece deal. The first step of the assembly process starts with putting together the base. Grab the steel end plates, cross straps if you have an XL or larger machine, and your wasteboard. Align the through holes and loosely fasten with the appropriate length button head cap screws. Throw on your leveling feet while you're at it. Now it's time to prep your carriage plates. On each one there's a pair of eccentric nuts that widen or narrow the spacing between V-wheels. Turn these clockwise until the V-wheel axes are spread as far apart as possible. Now you'll need to mate the Z and X carriages, which is easier to do when they're not on the rails. But regardless of your ability to do things in order, the process is the same. Slide the Z-plate assembly onto the Z-axis rails and fish the GT2 belt over the motor pulley and under the bottom idler bearing. Use the vertically oriented screw to tension the belt before locking in the position of the idler. At some point you'll also want to install the spindle mount. It's probably easier to do this sooner rather than later. With all carriage plates ready, it's time to add rails to the equation. Take one Y-axis plate and attach it to the X-axis rail. For stock shape Oko systems, this is the extrusion that you'll be mounting your controller board to. Everyone else should grab one of the rails that doesn't have holes drilled in it. From the open end of the rail, slide on the XZ carriage assembly. Take care not to let this slide around freely. It doesn't take much for it to start rolling, and if you're not careful, it could pinch your fingers, or worse, scuff the powder coating on your end plates. Now you can mount the other Y-axis carriage plate on the opposite side of the rail. With the X-axis gantry completed, slide in the Y-axis rails. Again, there is a high risk of things rolling around when you don't want them to. I personally like to immobilize the gantry with a couple clamps. You'll need to ease your Y-axis rails between the end plates. Using the help of some boxes to shim up your gantry and free up your hands, you can slide the rails into position with minimal paint scraping. Once in position, use cap screws to secure the extrusions to the end plates. Now you can go back and turn your eccentric nuts so that all of your V-wheels are in contact with the rails. To run your GT2 belts, secure one side to an end plate with a belt clip. There should be about 2 inches of interlocking belting wrapped under the top length. Get the belt around the motor pulley and then position the other belt clip just close enough for an M5 screw to engage the clip. Let the screw threads do the tensioning. If you have homing switches, now would be a good time to install them. Start by fastening your switches to their mounting plates. They take one screw apiece. Then, attach the switch assemblies to their associated end plates using standoffs and screws. If you have a stock size shape Oko, wiring up the machine basically entails plugging your stepper motors into the controller board, routing your power and USB cables somewhere safe, and then calling it a day. XL and larger machines will have a few more steps involved. First, there are drag chain brackets to install. These reuse attachment points from other components so you don't need any additional hardware. Through your drag chains, you're going to be running most of your stepper motor wires and limit switch wires. Route everything to your carbide motion board in the most efficient way possible. Then you can bolt the drag chains to their brackets and adhere the free ends to the rails. Plug in power from a thankfully smaller 24 volt adapter and you're basically ready to go. Depending on your machine, you'll also want to configure garble to enable homing and set up the correct soft limit bounds. From start to finish, expect the setup time to be reduced by at least 50% compared to the 2015 kit. And that's all I have for this week's video. I got a bunch of projects, reviews, and tutorial videos in the pipeline, so keep an eye out for those. Thank you all very much for watching.